Welcome, everyone. In this video, I will talk briefly about the Gauss-Newton algorithm and then demonstrate its implementation in a Python code. As you may know, Gauss-Newton algorithm is one of the common methods used to solve nonlinear least squares problems. These problems arise when the relationship between the dependent and the independent variables is nonlinear and there are constants to be determined. A classic example is fitting a material model into observed experimental behavior in order to get the material parameters of the model from a given vector of initial guesses of the model constants. The Gauss-Newton algorithm works iteratively to find the constants that minimize the sum of the squares. To begin, a vector of independent and independent data points is provided. In this case, the x is the independent whereas the y is the dependent variable. A vector of m initial guesses is provided which in this case, we have labeled as PO. It is worth noting that n must be equal or greater than m for the algorithm to work. R is a vector of residuals which is simply the difference between the observed and the model predicted values. The y and the y hat represent the observed and the predicted values respectively. The Jacobian is a matrix of rows equal to the number of data points and columns equal to the number of constants that is n rows and m columns. Its components are the partial derivatives of the residuals with respect to each of the constants. Taking k as the iteration number, the k plus 1 constants are given by, this equation is everything about Gauss-Newton algorithm as we will now implement it in Python. We will use an example that is available in Wikipedia with the following data and model equation. Two constants, C1 and C2 are to be determined using Gauss-Newton algorithm. The expressions for the residuals and the partial derivative of the residual with respect to the constants are as follows. Now, let's implement this in Python. You may use any of your favorite IDE but for me, I prefer Jupyter Notebook. First of all, let's import the necessary modules for this work which are NumPy and the matplotlib we will use matplotlib later after fitting the model to plot the model predictions against the experimentally observed data now let's define the dependent and the independent data that is the x and y values. In order to take advantage of the vector multiplication in Python, data should be in array format. Next, supply the initial guesses. In this case, both the C1 and C2 have an initial guess of 1. Initialize the Jacobian matrix. As already mentioned, the rows and the columns are equal to the number of x values and the number of constants. We will be interested to know the number of iterations it takes for the algorithm to converge. We initialize the iterations to zero. Now, we have to define an indefinite loop that will be stopped when a certain condition is met. That is, when the algorithm cannot improve the approximations of the constants anymore. J1 which is the first column of the Jacobian matrix is given by the partial derivative of the residual with respect to the first constant. whereas J2 is the second column given by partial derivative of the residual with respect to the second constant. It
is important to note that matrix multiplication is not commutative, meaning that, we can switch the order of the factors. We set temporary values, T1, T2, and T3 as follows to ensure matrix multiplications are in correct order. When the maximum absolute difference between P1 and PO is very small, the loop is broken. Otherwise, assign PO to P1. Our code looks good when the iteration is done. We want our constants to be stored to four decimal places and printed as follows. Now, let's execute the code. We find that after 8 iterations, C1 and C2 are found to be equal to 0.3618 and 0.5563 respectively. The number of iterations will be less if condition for breaking the loop is changed. Now, let's plot the predicted values against the observed data to see how good the model is. Firstly, we have to get the predicted values from the model equation now that we have the constants. We can use the coefficient of determination, commonly known as R squared, to find out how close the predicted values are to the data.
On running the code, we can see from the plot that the model does well. The dotted lines represent the predicted values whereas the scattered red dots represent the data. The R squared value is found to be 0.8811, which is very good. Remember, R squared value close to 1 mean higher accuracy. It is important to note that Gauss-Newton algorithm converges only when the initial guesses are close to the local minimum. The implementation of the algorithm in Python has been demonstrated in this video. The same procedure follows no matter how complex the model equation is. Many thanks for your attention.